thank you thank you harsh for coming in and uh, gracing this occasion and i do have to say thanks to sagar because he's kind of helped us in making sure that you are also available here uh, uh, it's it's not been very simple to meet up because i think uh, at various points of time we've always had various commitments and never had the chance to come in and meet up here like this i have about three or four questions uh, post that it's uh, Uh, an open invitation for others to also come in and ask if they have any questions that they have in their mind uh, what i thought was to kind of get people to get to know you and what better way to know an individual than for that person to tell what has got them here and what was the journey like so if you can give us a brief on your journey uh, yeah i think it's it's a pretty writing so <laughs> well uh <clears throat> Good evening friends uh, thank you kumar thank you sagar for inviting me to the retailers association of india uh <clears throat> how do i begin 61 years i have lived so there's a lot that has happened uh but i can only uh, <clears throat> instead of recounting events and probably that's neither possible to do it so briefly nor uh i have them readily structured in my memory but um, i think a couple of things stand out one of it is that a lot of things happened in life that i never expected and they were both pleasant and unpleasant and i don't think this is unusual for me i think it is true for all of us uh we plan man proposes god disposes sometimes we get very disheartened that the plans didn't work but the almighty had some other plans which were at times far better than our own plans and at times obviously we met with setback i've always uh, felt and i now increasingly of course uh the interesting thing about life is you become wiser as you have less and less time uh and hopefully if i had this reflective ability maybe 30 years back uh at least i would have had a let's say a more peaceful and happy journey one of the interesting things about life is its uncertainty uh i often say and i believe that uh, all of us know that the two most important things that define our life are birth and death and they are the two most uncertain events of our life we obviously nobody sought our permission before we popped up on this earth i'm sure your parents didn't ask your permission that you will be born on such and such day at such and such location and i think nobody here in this room will be able to say when and where he will leave this planet earth at least bodily these two events define our life and these are the two most uncertain events and yet when we look at life we look at trying to create certainty within these two most uncertain aspects that define it so there is a bit of a irony of sorts and uh over time i begin to begun to realize that one of the reasons why the mystery of life is so interesting is because of its uncertainty had we known exactly how things would unfold i think the drama the thrill one of the reasons why we enjoy watching sport live is because we know that we don't know what will happen if we watch a replay of a game we already know what has happened it never creates the same level of excitement as knowing that you don't know what will happen and therefore the learning that i have had from my life is that enjoy the journey and don't get too stressed about the destination because we don't know the destination uh jaggi vasudev sadguru said in a beautiful talk one day he said what's your goal he said well we are hurtling down to death that's the only goal in life because that's one certainty that we can't escape 
but certainly because we are hurtling towards our death doesn't mean that we don't enjoy the journey we all know i think uh, nobody here in this room will raise their hand and say that i know that i am not going to die i think nobody can say that uh, you don't know when you will die you don't know how you will die you don't know where you will die but you know certainly that you will die and therefore i think uh, the most interesting aspect of my life has been that this journey has been eventful and it has its katta meetha it has had its ups and downs it has some things that have worked and some things that haven't but uh, uh, so i just like to leave that as a thought the other thing that i have learned is that <clears throat> when we do any work um, we often look at it as a aspect of profit and loss i mean that's the conventional way any businessman looks at any activity i look at it more from the japanese concept of ikigai the ikigai concept is very simple are you doing something that you are passionate about point number 1 even if it is not the most fashionable thing to do but you are passionate about it that's the one that you are likely to succeed in the second aspect of ikigai is is it of use to people i mean you may want to do something which is of no use to anybody then that doesn't form ikigai the third is is it likely to allow an economic value to be created means there are works that you can do which you love to do for instance you might be happy digging a hole in the ground but it doesn't give anyone any benefit it can't create economic value then that doesn't constitute ikigai and finally what is it in what's in it for society and the and the world at large so i think uh, if we can find an intersection of an idea that f- forms out of these four thoughts then that is what we should do and if we do that chances are that whatever is our potential and capability we will likely reach there this is the other thing that i have learnt in the journey that i have uh, gone through and finally um, i was very privileged to be born and brought up in a joint family we lived together and because i was in a joint family different members of the f- family had different interests in various kinds of arts and music and literature and philosophy uh as a child i used to get drawn in by my uncles and aunts in different aspects and it used to be very irritating for a young kid who's w- wanting to play with his friends to be drawn into classical music and to be drawn into theater and to be drawn into Uh, many many literary and artistic activities which at that point of time were uh, were look uh, sounded to be boring and at least i used to be often chided by my friends who were busy playing that are what sort of a waste of time you are doing etc but uh, because we were in a joint family and in those days unlike today when the children can say dad chill i am not going and i am not doing we were not brought up that way we couldn't say dad chill if dad said do this we quietly went and did it uh, the good news is that all those influences have now come and become a part of me which in turn has now helped me in bringing that into my work and so when i see in my projects a certain amount of artistic influences it is not because i deliberately do anything is just the fact that i was brought up in that environment and those childhood uh, inculcation of ideas and thoughts now find its fruition and when my projects get appreciated i can only go and say that well this appreciation is deserved by my family by my parents and grandparents because had they not given me that opportunity i would have never volunteered to learn all those things so this is broadly and i think i've taken long to answer this question but uh, this i thought could be more useful than narrating a whole series of events of my life well, that's really nice and lovely i think uh, it sets the ball rolling in terms of thinking for everybody uh, it's 
also the kind of things that each person goes through in life in some form or the other it's possibly got conceptualized and concise on a lighter note place. if you liked what i say you can clap also because uh, <laughs> not not because i need the applause because i need to know whether you're listening to what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> if they don't clap it could also mean they are still thinking <laughs> so, or oh, they oh, uh, the, yeah, the cuckoo has flown over the nest so. <laughs> okay yeah, i i wonder actually people who are less than 30 years of age should clap ah, that they're does very, it very that few, does it that's very See? few then in the room <laughs> <laughs> no, that does it so <laughs> the, the, the the question obviously because it's a retail event i'll need to ask you this mall what made you create a mall and what's been your thought around it and uh, how's the journey been for that well creating a mall was an accident uh, i suppose uh, because we were one of the early uh, people who set up one <clears throat> it was a tender that came out for the land on which city center in salt lake is located Uh, the land belonged to the government they came out with the tender that they want to make a uh, city center incidentally was not a name i gave to it the tender said we want to build a city center i didn't know what they meant by a city center so when we went for a pre bid meeting for that we asked what do you mean by a city center they said well well there will be shops and there will be cinema and there will be Uh, other facilities so we said okay and uh, i think the government at that time had in mind that salt lake had become already a well lived in place but they didn't have common infrastructure so uh, a little more modern form of the new market could come up there because uh, that's what i understood <clears throat> anyway uh, there was a 25% provision that you could put up apartments and 75% had to be done for this commercial purpose mm -hmm. since i was interested in architecture and design as a part of my interest i was in touch with mr korea and i was very keen that mr charles korea builds a project in calcutta because we didn't have a charles korea project of any significance in calcutta and so i approached him and said would you like to do this of course he was not very initially happy to be doing this project but anyway to cut a long story short he agreed and a lot of the definition that came into city center is mr charles korea's contribution uh i of course told him what we wanted by that time there was already the crossroads mall in Bom mumbai and there was already a mall i think the ansal plaza in ansal delhi, was in delhi. and uh, in calcutta the forum had just opened but when we were planning uh, city center forum hadn't opened because forum opened only 6 months before we opened so anyway <clears throat> he then came and spent 3 4 days in calcutta and he went around and then he said you know we should not make a mall the way the malls are abroad because they will not work to the context of the city we should make a mall which is more like a marketplace and at that time i remember through anuj puri who was a friend of mine who runs anorock now uh, he put me in touch with many of the retailers people uh like uh, mr ravi and uh, ravi raheja and others and they all felt that this whole idea of a marketplace combined with a mall is not a good idea we should have an air conditioned mall and that's the way to go but mr charles korea was adamant and by that time we had signed him on so i really uh, and obviously it had it had become headline news in calcutta because uh, Charles Korea coming to Calcutta yes. was headline news so i had already jumped <laughs> into a situation that i couldn't get back out of and so um he kind of then drove the agenda much to my bit of my reluctance also but uh, he was a very powerful personality and i was in awe of him 
and he did make sense in what he was saying but i was also getting a different pressure from the retailers so i was in a bit of a sandwiched situation but nevertheless and that's where i say the passion came in my gut feeling told me that what mr korea was suggesting was a good idea though my business side of it was telling me that no 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 this is a problem because most people were feeling it's a problem anyway uh, the good news is that city center was built the way mostly charles korea wanted with some modifications that i was able to navigate into it and uh, initially it met with uh, resistance when we opened the mall uh, we had one shopper stop open and we had one or two retail outlets open most of the mall was unleased and it on the first weekend after opening i went there was surprised there were 5 to 10000 people sitting in the kund and enjoying and i remember there was no outlet there for food so uh, people were just coming and they were hanging because the food court was to open 3 4 months later so i set up t junction which became another business of mine but that was all done in 7 days uh, we just put it together because i said at least if people come they should be able to have some samosa and some chai if not anything else and we got a mudi wala and we put him there etc it's the crowd that started coming that actually then convinced the retailer of the potential and then we got a huge demand so one year from the day we opened we were pretty much full but uh, this is how life is sometimes uh, you just follow your instinct and it works this is one of those things that worked it could have failed in which case i would be t- i wouldn't be invited by you yeah and yeah. <laughs> no for two reasons one is because i occupied the shopper stop i was part of shopper stop at that time yes <laughs> so and now of course it not i've been part of the retail community <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah so so that's really a nice nice way of thinking so sometimes we think that we know what is going to happen but it's very different but this whole korea incidents devil and the deep sea incidents quite nice quite yeah. interesting uh cut to two years before uh the pandemic and what's happened then uh what has been your off take of pandemic and what do you think is happening to consumers because i'm sure you're seeing a lot of people and you're kind of thinking what's going to happen to them see when we are looking at the pandemic from hindsight means from today then it is one unfortunate event that happened and uh of course from a health perspective from a business perspective but if i look at the pandemic and i go back to april of 2020 uh when the lockdown was just started and if i think of what i was thinking i don't think i have ever been as shocked and as confused and as uh i would say concerned an individual ever in my life it so coincidentally happened that all the businesses that i was involved with were in the contact sector means people had to meet people in order for me to transact business i was in hospitality all my hotels were shut i was in restaurants all my restaurants were shut i was in malls all my malls were shut i was in offices my uh, means i had leased out offices and all the offices were shut at construction sites if you remember in the first lockdown all construction site construction work was shut i was in hospitals and we were not a covid hospital but we were women and child primarily and we used to do 85% to 90% occupancy in the first month in april the occupancy fell to 30% because seven except for childbirth which obviously the action was taken 9 months back it had to happen but uh, for every other um, uh, ailment people had postponed it uh, the doctors had postponed and the patients had postponed i had a university all the students had gone home the university was shut i had not a single business i said god i must have been crazy to think of every single business that had to be bloody shut and for <laughs> shut for for the next whatever 4 5 6 months so and we had a sizable 
because we had been on an expansion spree, we had debt on our books. And I said, holy cow, what have I fallen into? This is like going to be crazy. And we obviously, nobody knew how this will unfold, when this damn thing will come to an end. Uh, so it was a very, very difficult period. Uh, first six months, I think, was traumatic. But thankfully, the government came out with some restructuring of loan schemes. So we were staring at a default. Uh, at those, those days, even if we had some backup in the form of assets, but who was buying assets? Everyone was in a mood not, not to buy anything. So even if I had potentially value, but I didn't have a liquidity. So I was staring at a default. Thankfully, the government came out with the restructuring of loans and all of that. And so we were able to roll over. But there were loans being restructured. It was not a grant. So we knew that we were adding more debt with, without knowing how the hell this will be paid. But at least we were not going to default on that day. So you were kicking the can down the road and hoping that something will happen. Thankfully, real estate revived first. Uh, and then, of course, other sectors did. So today, when we look back, uh, it's been a blip. It's been a bad blip, but that's about it. We are pretty much on track. And of course, it's going to take some time to fill that gadda up. So it's OK. I mean, in life, uh, you'll always have some challenges and something. But it's not a tragedy of the kind that we imagined. So you know, there's two things when you look at it from now you can actually romanticize the uh, the the pain yes, and no look question. at it say ha ek to takleef hui thi ha but at that moment if i remember correctly <laughs> it wasn't at all a pain that i would ever wish even on my enemy so at that time did you romanticize at all and think ye bhi shayad thal jayega and then i'm going to romanticize it no, no, not I was at not at all, not for the first. As I said, I could see some glimmer of hope six months down that kuch, kuch, uh, you know, the, the door is parted, some crack some of light. Some light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, something is being, but for six months, I, I was a, definitely a very worried man. But I am a little spiritual, so I got some solace from Almighty Bay. I, I had more time to do more meditation, which I happily did. And so it kept me in a sense of peace, but um, definitely, deeply, internally, I was shaken. Uh, we don't have much time, says time's up. One yeah. last question from you. Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, what do you think as an industry we should do to make it stronger? Well, listen, yeah. this is I a know, it, question an, that I, shouldn't come <laughs> to me. <laughs> I'm only a hardware provider, yeah. and uh, I hope I will continue to provide uh, in times to come, more engaging, more useful, more well-provided, more comprehensive and artistically beautiful places. Uh, I really am not in that space uh, of, uh, of retail. But I know that consumer demand in India is only going to skyrocket. Uh, obviously, I still do believe, maybe because I'm a little biased on the hardware side, that experiential buying is uh, going to dominate, not e-commerce. Yeah. E-commerce e probably will in certain segments where you don't need the experience. For instance, it's almost unthinkable now to go to a bookstore to buy a book or to buy music or some items like that, which you probably don't need to experience very much. But clothing and other things and fashion and a uh, whole host of items that go into a, a shopping mall are also people enjoy that experience of touching, feeling, and buying. And I would think that will continue. I think uh, India will be a $10 trillion economy in the next seven years from by 2030. And if that is going to happen, which is likely to happen, then we will have a consumer size bigger than the USA in India. And that would be huge. Fantastic. So uh, since we are beyond time is there any chance to ask one anybody's got an immediate question to ask or we just show our appreciation with a loud loud really loud show of hands or clap <laughs> thank you very much obviously we didn't provide enough time and we didn't have enough time uh, but it's been wonderful i think it set all of us thinking it's also made us thank each other
uh, i think most importantly we need to appreciate what's happening to us and to be able to appreciate the fact that we are alive whatever way excuse me right so thank you so much